About a year and a half ago, I made a video all about PlayStation VR games worth buying, and that video did really well. It got over a million views, and a lot of people told me to make another one. So I figured what better time to do it than over a year later when no one really even cares about PlayStation VR anymore. Also, this clearly isn't plugged in or turned on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it down there. Alright, let's freaking go! <laughs> Disclaimer going into this video. I really do enjoy VR games, but I get VR motion sick pretty easily. But there has honestly been so many cool games released on the VR over the last year, I decided to dive back in once more and see what this clunky headset has to offer. And I found some legit brilliant games for this video, and none of them made me feel sick. So, I am very excited to talk about something non-Nintendo for once. And whether you enjoy VR or not, I hope you still have a good time in this video. Smash like! <laughs> and headset hair flip all over that subscribe button. I almost lost it. So here are just some of the games I tried for this video, and one that definitely made the cut. Tetris Effect. Tetris Effect is both a game and an experience. It's truly one of the hardest VR games to explain or review. Because it's really hard to bring someone into a VR world with you with just words. It's something you just need to experience for yourself to fully understand what it's like. And that goes for every game on this list, but honestly, it's the most true with Tetris VR. Because watching someone play this game is borderline boring. Even showing gameplay here as I talk, it's just going to look like basic Tetris. I mean, you can't even hear the sounds that accompany the game, and that's a huge part of the experience in Tetris Effect. Every move you make while you play, every turn of a piece, every placement, every cleared line is accompanied by a sound or a music note that seamlessly blends in with the soundtrack of the level. Not only adding to the composition of the song, but improving on it and shaping it by how you play the game. It evokes such a strong emotional reaction, almost as if you are the conductor of this Tetris orchestra guiding the music with your playstyle. Couple that with the intense visuals around you that also morph and react to your every move and maybe you can start to understand what I mean by this game being an experience. Tetris has seen so many variations throughout the years and other than Tetris Effect's zone ability allowing you to freeze time momentarily as you rack up big points by clearing lines, the actual gameplay here is as basic Tetris as Tetris gets. And yet this is by far my favorite Tetris game. It's Tetris the way it's always been and yet at the same time it's the best it's ever been. Although Tetris 99 is still pretty freaking great. Okay, Pixel Ripped. I don't think this one has a physical release, but it really needs to because it's one of my favorites. So I took some time off playing VR since my last video, and Pixel Ripped was the reason I got back into it. The game was just so freaking cool. It gave me the drive to seek out other cool VR games I might have missed during my time off. There is so much going on in this game, I'm not even sure where to begin. I guess to start with, it's a game within a game within another game? Kind of? It's mind-bending either way. <laughs> Pixel Rip's first layer is an old-school retro 8-bit style game that plays super similar to NES Mega Man's. Actually, this part is a crazy good game on its own right, borrowing the rings mechanic from Sonic. But then we find out that this 8-bit game world is in trouble, and they need the help of the player to fix it. The player, however, it isn't you, at least not yet. The next layer of Pixel Ripped is the real life player. She is playing a Game Boy clone console of sorts in class. And what game is she playing? Pixel Ripped, the 8-bit Mega Man game we were introduced to earlier. And now you play as her, playing Pixel Ripped. <laughs> You're following along? In this first real life level, you need to avoid being caught by the teacher. Using a spit tube, you can distract her by spitting wads of paper at different objects in the room. Each object you hit will do something different, but equally crazy within the classroom. And you need to finish the level in Pixel Ripped without being caught. And this creates so much mayhem as you frantically whip your head around looking for new ways to distract the teacher as you try to beat the already pretty challenging Mega Man clone in your hands. 
I realize it's a GameCube controller. I left my PlayStation controller downstairs and I'm lazy. So yeah, I don't need your attitude right now. It is so good and I love it. This part of the game had me hooked, but it honestly only gets cooler from here. The next level of gameplay is when these worlds merge. The world of Pixel Ripped explodes out of the Game Boy and suddenly you need to guide the hero around the real world. At times, even having to protect your fellow students from 8-bit attacks. There are more cool things that happen throughout this adventure and I don't want to ruin all of the secrets, but the game is a pretty hard challenge overall and just a ton of fun. And it is just pumped with so much 90s nostalgia that even as a retro gamer, it's hard not to love this futuristic thrill ride. Blood and Truth is a technological standout game on the list. And I practiced saying technological like three times before I said that line, and I still almost screwed it up. <laughs> it aimed to be the first full single player story driven action adventure game for VR, which is a pretty ambitious undertaking when you're breaking new ground. But it's a risk I'm glad they took because they ended up making a really cool game. In this game, you take up the role of a former special forces soldier who must save his family. Think like the story of an action movie like Taken, but spliced in with a game kind of like Uncharted, I guess. Ultimately, I would say they succeeded in what they set out to do. I love the game. It was an action packed roller coaster ride from start to finish with some crazy cool block Buster magic moments like running through a collapsing building and jumping out of the window last second or intense car chase scenes that have you blowing away anyone trying to keep up with you. The action is done so well. You have an ammo patch right on your chest, you have two spots for sidearms on your side and then you have spots for two big guns behind you and I have to say nothing feels as cool as pulling that shotgun from behind your back and just blasting away at enemies or you could be like the Reaper in Overwatch and do wield shotguns or have any combination of any weapons you find throughout the match and just be all mixing and matching them like crazy it is really good. <laughs> the only real downside is the hardware limitations of the PlayStation VR because these move controllers don't have analog sticks. So moving around the game, you have to look where you want to go and then select it with a button, which then moves you towards that spot. And it ends up feeling a little more like an on-rail shooter rather than an action game that it's trying to replicate. But you do have the freedom of moving around the levels in any direction you want, so that does help. Even during the more uncharted, climbing over everything parts of the game, I held my lunch just fine. And it was pretty cool actually, having to climb up the side of a building as stupid as I probably looked in real life. <laughs> and even cooler still in the moments where I had to stop mid-climb, reach down to my hip, grab out a silenced pistol, and take out an enemy before putting it away and continuing. The game also added in a ton of fun VR gameplay elements throughout the adventure to really keep it fresh. It's more than just a shooty shooty bang bang game. The attention to details in some areas really surprised me. Customizing my own weapons, even giving them a fresh coat of paint, and then getting to test them out before the next mission was a pretty clever idea. The only real negative is that at times it's probably a little too story driven, with the action feeling few and far between heavy dialogue scenes. And since all you can really do is just stand there and listen to characters talk while waving your arms around like crazy, those moments do drag on. Even with the pretty fantastic voice acting and character animations and well-written story. They did a good job with all of that, honestly. I would say that Blood and Truth is a reason to get a PlayStation VR, so if you already have one, get Blood and Truth. Okay, Trover Saves the Universe is one of my favorites, and it can be played in VR or without VR, so if you like the look of the game and you don't have VR, still consider it. From the creator of Rick and Morty, you know, I used to call myself a Rick and Morty fan, but I guess at this point I should just start calling myself a Justin Rowland fan. The creator of Rick and Morty has made a couple of VR games now, Accounting Plus, which is still one of my favorites, and the Rick and Morty VR game, of course. And now we have Trover Saves the Universe, not Trevor. It just it had to be Trover. <laughs> so with Justin, I feel like his work always starts in the voiceover booth. Sometimes the dialogue can get real rambly, but it's worth it for those moments when the voice actor stumbles on something truly hilarious. I feel a little bit out of the loop on this whole jingles dancing thing. As you should, Trover. When our jingles dance, that means that we're very happy. <laughs> 
Hold on. That... <laughs> you play as the nameless Cheropian. You're tasked with guiding Trover to save the universe. Both you and Trover are separate characters in this adventure, thrown together like a buddy cop movie. You're even able to respond to other characters on your own by nodding or shaking your head to answer the weirdest of questions thrown at you. And it's always funniest to do the opposite of what you're probably expected in the situation, so I recommend that. The game plays as a hack and slash puzzle platformer. You float around the world and control the action from above. The gameplay is pretty solid, I mean it's basic, but most of the fun comes from the stupid tasks and goals you are given to complete. And a lot of the puzzles are pretty well thought out. Throughout the adventure, the characters will give you constant upgrades by spitting on you and then making fun of you. The enemies you face will have a few choice things to say about you and Trover as you wail on them. Actually, speaking of that, I did appreciate the option between vulgar and family-friendly dialogue at the start of the game. That way, kids can enjoy the title too, and trust me, you would not want a child to play the non-censored version, holy moly. But the core gameplay is fun for all ages, so it's a really nice addition. Anyway, this was a really cool adventure from start to finish. I really enjoyed the story it told, and even though it was handled intentionally stupid, I liked the character development of Trover. The worlds are great to explore, bright, cartoonish, beautiful environments, loads of stupid characters to meet, collectibles to find, fun gameplay mechanics, really great music. It's just a really solid adventure and I appreciated this VR experience so much. If you decide to skip this game because you think you don't like Rick and Morty and that whole sense of humor, then I would say that you truly are missing out on one of the best VR games so far. Okay, I have mixed emotions about Firewall Zero Hour. You know, on one hand, it's by far the best shooter game I've played in VR, hands down. And on the other hand, it's all online and literally shotgun blasting another real life human in the face is both awesome and strange feeling. Um, the game reminds me of Counter-Strike, the mode I played anyway. It was 4v4 player versus player matches where one team defends a laptop and the other team tries to hack it. Killing each other in the process, of course. It's just so uh, strange. It feels like military training. I have played so many gun games in VR at this point, killing countless faceless enemies in super hot, blasting away British spies in Blood and Truth. It's just so different working with a team of real people, covering each other, watching them go down to the hands of the enemy, and then trying to fire that winning bullet. I wasn't made for the army, so my own weirdness aside, it is a really fantastic game. It plays brilliantly. It feels weird to say the controls are super tight because you are the controls, but I've never felt like I've had so much control over what I was doing. The aiming felt like spot on. And it's the first VR game I've played that has you freely moving around, walking around the maps, and it didn't make me want to vomit, so that was impressive. I'm honestly not sure why, but I can play this game for hours without feeling motion sick at all. This game was supposed to be 20 bucks, but the GameStop I went to didn't have it loose. They only had it with this monstrosity that came with the gun. I felt like the gun was going to be a gimmick that I didn't need, but I also didn't need to drive around to a bunch of other GameStops trying to find the game loose, so thank you Patreons, I decided to splurge, and I'm really, really glad I did. Ah, uh, for starters, you know how I was complaining earlier about the move sticks not having analog? Yeah, that's not an issue with this thing. I got an analog here and here. And every gun in this game is wielded with two hands anyway, built with this thing in mind. And no matter what gun you're holding in the game, your brain morphs this thing into that gun. This thing makes Firewall 10 times better, and I highly recommend it if you're gonna try out the game. Firewall Zero Hour is for sure the best online VR game I've played. It honestly feels like legit military training, and that is really cool in a weird way. I mean, my redneck friends here in Texas love this game, so take that how you will. There really isn't much to say about Skyrim VR. It is, in my opinion, an extremely impressive leap forward in VR gaming. Yes, we are talking about a game that's been out for like a decade now and ported to everything from switches to toasters, but VR has such limitations right now, and Skyrim VR is just one of those games that manages to break that limitation. Most VR games either end up having an extremely simple concept, rinse and repeat it over and over to make up the entire experience, or they end up feeling more like a mini tech demo for what could have been a really cool fleshed out game. But Skyrim VR? It's 
just that. The entire Skyrim experience, the hundred hour adventure, every cave, every enemy, every weapon, every spell, you can do it all. Literally the only reason I picked up this game having played Skyrim before was so that I could wield a spell with one hand and feel like a magician and have a sword in the other hand and to wield a bow and arrow because I thought that would be really cool and it was. So if you can stomach a full playthrough of Skyrim with this monster weighing down your neck and keeping your face nice and toasty, then Skyrim VR is a no-brainer. For me though, I'm actually holding out playing this entire game through until PlayStation 5 and hopefully PSVR 2 which supposedly doesn't have any wires and is more lightweight. I just can't sit there with this thing on my face for 100 hours. Beat Saber is the kind of game that VR was made for. It is unrelenting, unforgiving, unapologetic fun. And I refuse to believe there is a soul on earth that would not enjoy playing this game assuming they enjoy VR in general. It's such a simple premise, but it's exhilarating to slash away at these blocks as fast-paced beats pound in your ears. Imagine like Guitar Hero, but instead of a guitar, you have two freaking Star Wars lightsabers. I've played the game and that excites me. <laughs> you use your sabers to cut up these blocks as they rush towards you. The white arrows on the blocks depict what direction you need to cut them in. And throughout the trash, you'll have to dodge and duck under walls too, not only adding to the challenge, but also the workout that is playing this game. Never have I gotten so freaking sweaty playing a video game. The PlayStation VR version of this game introduced an exclusive campaign mode, which was almost an apology for the fact they are very limited in the song options. See, on the PC versions of this game, you can download and import anything you want to play. Not just music, but the entire freaking Shrek movie if you wanted to. But that's not really possible on PlayStation, whether it's due to the lack of ability to just do it, or a copyright issue, I'm not sure. So you're stuck with the default tracks made for the game. They are pretty good, however, after a few hours cycling through these tracks, you'll start to wish there was just one more to choose from. And while the campaign missions add a good challenge to the existing tracks, Nothing would beat being able to download your favorite Papa Roach song and just Luke Skywalker all over it. But having said that, I still recommend getting Beat Saber any way you can, even if getting it on PlayStation VR is your last resort. The Persistence is a first-person roguelike horror game that I, 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 did, I didn't play really much at all. <laughs> and not because it's bad, actually, it's really, really good. But because I'm a... Uh, I'm a big old baby. Fans of my channel might know that I, I, I don't play horror games. They just ain't for me. I took all of about 10 steps inside that shack in Resident Evil 7 VR and noped the heck out. And I did a similar thing here with Persistence, which really is my loss because it is one of the best games on PlayStation VR. So I've been told, so I've seen, and so I played for like a minute. <laughs> so if you want a better, more inclusive review of this game, I'm gonna leave links down below for you to check out a couple other channels that clearly have bigger stones than I do. I will say that this game is really fun to play, and if you like being scared crapless, then it's even funner still. Due to it being roguelike, you can't even get used to the scary as it changes every time you die. It has some really unique ideas too, like a second player being able to join the game via their phone and make the game even more scary for you by placing creatures on the map. But that's all I got for this one. It's really great and check it out if it looks like something you might enjoy. I'm sorry. Ghost Giant is an absolutely beautiful game with extremely likable characters. I adore the way this game is presented in every single way. Each level is a brand new gorgeous diorama for you to explore. However, I'll admit at first, I felt really limited in what I could do and what I could interact with. You truly are a ghost. You stand, sit, and watch the story unfold around you. And while you can't control or even pick up the main character that is a human boy cat thing named Louie, who I actually really like, you can help him out from time to time by moving heavy objects or finding items around the world for him. The voice acting is done so well, and the story begins so adorably that I was immediately engrossed in everything that was happening around me, but again, it's just that. It was happening around me. I felt limited in what I could do beyond that. But then, as I progressed through the game, I began to understand why it was designed that way. And honestly, 
It hit me pretty hard. Louis's inner struggles start to unfold as you begin to realize what he's been dealing with. Darker themes start to settle in, such as loneliness, friendship, and even depression. Not realizing what story was going to be told going into this game, yeah, it caught me off guard. I had grown to like Louis. I felt like we had formed a bond watching over him as we played the game together. It was a cutesy little adventure, and then suddenly I just felt terrible for him, and I just wanted to to help, and I couldn't. And if you've ever experienced depression or you know anyone that's been through it, you might start to understand what I meant by feeling kinda just helpless in this game. I guess what I'm saying is, gameplay wise, there isn't a lot going on here. It's more like a point and click VR game with some light puzzle solving. The VR experience here is more about exploring this beautifully crafted world that does have a ton of secrets hidden within it if you look hard enough, and mostly, it's just got quite the story to tell you. The game's only a few hours long, but it's also only 25 bucks. So if it sounds interesting to you, check this one out. Oh, you have to play Astrobot, everyone kept telling me. It's the best Nintendo game that wasn't made by Nintendo, everyone kept telling me. Okay, I mean, I'm sure it's good. I'll try it, but it ain't gonna be no Nintendo. As a self-proclaimed hardcore Nintendo fan, I really found it hard to believe. Nintendo has a certain charm, a way of making every single element of their games just fun. They've had years of practice managing to cram fun in every aspect of a video game seamlessly and in a way that no other developer would even consider. So while I believed that, yeah, fine, Astro Boy was probably going to be a lot of fun, Nintendo levels of quality? Psh, I don't think so, buddy. Yeah, I was wrong. Astro Boy is undoubtedly the best Nintendo game that Nintendo never made. The fun is indeed crammed into every aspect of this game. The creativity and ingenuity behind every level, every moment, every second throughout this adventure is inspiring, exciting, and just say it with me people, Fun. The attention to detail is outstanding. The worlds that Astro Bot have built are vibrant, varied, creative, and adorable. I could gush about this freaking game for days, so let me just break down what it's all about. The game begins with a fantastic opening animation that truly sets up the quality of the rest of the game. This space station gets torn apart with all the Astro Bots being scattered across the universe. It's your job to find the pieces of the ship and collect as many Astro Bots as possible. And these little guys are freaking adorable. That really does play a big part into the Nintendo-like charm. They're just so freaking likable! You find them throughout each level and depending on the level's theme, they will be dressed differently and doing different things, but it's always adorable. They are really fun to find too, always hidden in unique ways. You really have to explore this level not only as the little bot you control, but looking and peeking around every corner. Also, you get to control your own little asteroid bot that you deploy from your controller each level. And I I love the way they implemented the controller into the game as a device that you use. You store the bots in it, you use it to open crates to get upgrades, like a grappling hook or a water gun. It's just so good, man. Anyway, <laughs> I was off script then, by the way. I just, I'm gushing. I wrote more about this game than any of the other games, so I'm trying to <laughs> keep it short. You have complete control over this little guy as he platforms across the world. He'll even wave at you as he passes your headset and give you a big hug if you run him straight towards your face. He feels like like your little pet that loves you unconditionally just for taking care of him. He's a good boy and I love him. Don't say anything bad about him. <laughs> each of the five worlds have five different levels and each of those levels always have completely unique environments which blew my mind. They could easily have just made each world a theme and it would have been perfectly fine. With the fantastic level design throughout this game, I would not have complained if we had, let's say, like a beach world consisting of five levels and so on but rather, again, each level on every world is a completely new kind of amazing. Each one more gorgeous than the last. It's like every time you finish a level, you want to stop the next one to see what it looks like visually and like what's gonna happen. Not only are you controlling this little guy interacting with the world that way, but the game also brings you, the player, into the world and gives you things to do, like head smashing walls or dodging enemies that are aware of your presence. Oh, and the whole cramming fun into every aspect thing, that comes into play 
place so often. Like at the end of levels, the level doesn't just end. There's always time for more fun. Depending on how many Astro Babies you found throughout the level, you get a ring for each one. Those rings start moving up in the sky and you pull back on your PS4 touchpad like a slingshot, aim and shoot your bot through as many of those rings as possible. You get coins for each one you hit and then all the bots have a little dance party which never gets old. The moment I was truly hooked was at the end of the first world during the boss fight. This huge ape truly felt huge. It was honestly daunting looking up at him with his giant monkey arms. Dodging his bites and aftershocks, chipping away at his teeth and then using my controller grappling hook to yank his face towards the building. Such clever game design and I loved every second of it. There is a load of replayability and it's for sure the best game on PlayStation VR in my opinion. I was so impressed I had to look up the developer of the game because I needed answers and honestly when I found out who it was it actually made a lot of sense. As you can probably tell, there is so much more I could say about this game if I had time here, so just go and play it. And in the meantime, I'll be up in the space station playing with these little guys and trying my luck at the claw machine. Oh, it's a good one. Okay guys, I had a lot of fun making this video. We'll put this bad boy back on to end it. Of course, you know me, I'll be back on Switch next video, I'm sure. But if you liked this video, please smash that like button, hair flip all over that subscribe button. I don't expect this video will do as well as my last one just because no one really cares about PlayStation VR anymore. So I would really appreciate it if you shared this video out with friends, family, anyone you think would care about it, or even someone you don't think would care about it. Just get it out there. I had fun making it, that's all that matters, and you had fun watching it, right? All right, this took me like an hour to record. I have nothing left to say of interest, so just like, bye, get out of here. See ya.